to a pedestal, to a platform, that when you make a request to Allah, there will be clout and weight and strength in your request. Here comes the point of temptation. Here comes the element of benefit versus harm. فَيُقْضَى لَهُ مِنَ الْحَوَائِجِ أَبْعَافَ أَبْعَافَ مَا فَاتَهُ مِنْ هَوَاهُ He said, when you don't succumb to your ego, for the moment your ego will throw a tantrum, like a child throws a tantrum. That's it. Because you have accustomed it to a particular evil and a vice. So if you were popping a pill, or you were chatting with a woman, or you were playing a machine, or you were indulging in intro, whatever the nature of the crime is, I'm just isolating two, three. Every time that you are dependent on that, you will come to that moment, there will be a moment of restlessness, uneasiness, there will be a crave, there will be a withdrawal symptom, whatever it is. If you resist that, he says, your ego will not get the excitement of the moment, but your ranking with your creator will go up so high that one luxury or one fake pleasure of yours will not be catered for, but a thousand requests of yours will be in, in, immediately honored. A thousand requests of yours will be immediately honored. It's your choice, my brother. It's your call. If I chat with that girl, and I compromise my bond with my Allah, and then I come home and I lift my hands and there's no strength to my du'as, and there's no clout to my requests, and there's no might to my prayers, and I hold the Kaaba, and I do my prayers, but it's not coupled with any strength and might and vigor. Or I resist the temptation, benefit versus harm. Look at the harm of the sin, what it's doing to me. One brother had told me he had a habit of smoking many, many years ago. He said, I vowed to Allah that I want to leave this, and he didn't have children. And he said, Allah, I want children, and I'm asking you, I'm giving up this evil practice, bless me with children. He said, I continued for a few months, we got into a social circle, and here everybody takes out a cigarette, and then I was offered, and obviously my ego went to its provocation at optimum, and then I asked myself, do I want a cigarette or do I want children? Do I want a cigarette or do I want children? My brother, do you want an Allah or do you want a woman? Do you want the happiness of this life? the wholesome nature of a pure, wholesome life, that you come home and you don't only share a one roof, but you share a common life, versus the modern day poverty, what I call. What's the modern day poverty? Sharing one roof, living independent lives. So at times you are awakened by the call of nature, and two o'clock you go to the toilet or the washroom, and you see the light of your son on in his room, or the light of your daughter on, and you knock the door and you get in. It would have been great, it would have been awesome, it would have been tearing. If you walked in that room and you found your daughter in prostration, and you seen your son holding the Qur'an, but on the reverse, you will find a haughty youngster, a snobbish young girl, who's got an earphones on her head, playing on the computer, heaven alone knows with which boy she's chatting in which part of the world. Modern day poverty in the heart of affluence, sharing one room, sharing one roof, living distinct lives. The call is yours, my brother. We are at the threshold of Ramadan. I said, what is 15 Shaban? 15 Shaban is a pre-wash. The actual wash happens. You get in rid of the stubborn stains. And then you do the thorough wash in Ramadan. Here you are, my brother, here's the call. Then he cites few examples. Sufyan Thawri, rahmatullah, a great scholar, a great scholar, who was known for his control over his ego. One day one brother did me a favor. I asked him what I owe you. He said, no, no, don't insult me with money, but I do have a request. I said, okay, what's it? He said, make one prayer for me, a simple dua. I said, okay, what's it? Just make dua that Allah give me strength to overpower my ego. I said, the dua is simple. The work is not simple, my brother. That's far from simple. One leg on your ego, the next leg in paradise. 
That guy said, I'm on my way, all excited. Where are you? I'm getting married to the princess. Wow. Is that true? Yes, I love her. She just has to love me. In that, in that first statement, it's not only you. The whole world loves her. You're not the only one that has the exclusive rights of loving her. In fantasy, the whole world is with you. But for her to just love you, dream. Dream, my brother. It's a lifelong challenge. It's a lifelong challenge. At times my heart agonizes me. At times I agonize my heart. Sometimes I get up and I obey my Allah and I win. Sometimes the devil overpowers me. And in the night I beg my Allah to forgive me for what I've done. And I start again. But at least when I start up in the morning, I bow before my Creator. Ask yourself, have you ever, have you ever in your life, and you decide what's your age and you know better, started the morning, commenced the break of dawn, oh my Lord, my agenda for today is, I'm not going to disobey you at all. Oh my Allah, can I have one clean day in my life? Oh my Allah, can I have the desire of one clean day in my life? If it doesn't feature as a remote aspiration, when will it become a practical reality? We're getting up with this dream and that dream and this hope and that monetary and what and what. This doesn't end. So anyway, Sufyan Sawri Rahmatullahi was sitting in the Kaaba. Abu Ja'far Mansur, Abu Ja'far Mansur had ordered the execution of Sufyan Thawri Rahmatullahi. He said, apprehend him and kill him. His head was in the lap of Fudayl ibn Ayyad. So, Fudayl ibn Ayyad said, Ittaqillah wa la tushmit bin al a'da There is a warrant of arrest and uh, Abu Jafar has ordered your apprehension and your subsequent assassination. Take measures and be on guard. He was reclining at the Kaaba. He was a man who had mustered the courage to control his lustful soul. So he had a bond that was developing with his Allah. He had a relation that was establishing. So it comes in the narration, he just leaped forward. فَتَقَدَّمَ إِلَى الْأَسْتَارِ And then he held on to the cloth of the Kaaba. And he said, بَرِئْتُ مِنْهُ إِنْ دَخَلَهَا أَبُوْ جَعْفَرِ Allah, I ask you through the agency of the relation that we enjoy for a very long time. Allah, I don't want Abu Jafar to put his foot in Mecca. And oh my Allah, I say to you, I'm not going to settle for anything less. When you read the prayers of the pious, by Allah you will realize they didn't only supplicate their Allah, they spoke to him. They spoke to him. Oh my Allah, Zakariya alayhi salam, Inni wahan al-azm minni, Washta'ala al-ra'su shayba, Wa lam akun bidu'aika rabbi shakiyya, Wa inni khiftu al-mawaliya min warai, Wa kanat al-ra'ati aqira, Fahabiyuni yadunka waliya, Oh my word, I wish you knew Arabic to comprehend the eloquence and the profoundness. Zakariyak supplicates his Allah, the opening verses of Surah Maryam. He's hundred years of age, he doesn't have a child. He says, وَهَنَلْ عَظْمُ مِنِّي Oh my Allah, my bones are weak, the time has passed. وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبَ My hair has given off repeated white strands. وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّا but you've never denied and deprived me. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي And if I don't have a son, I don't see anyone liable that will carry on my mission after my demise. Allah, I'm old, I'm aged, I'm weak, I'm feeble. Time has passed, the moment is gone. But you kind, فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا Do me that favor and confirm that my wife will conceive and I'm going to have a baby. وَجْعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّا And oh my Lord, if you are going to accept my prayer, please make him obedient to you before conception. Let me know he's going to be pious when he's born. I mean, he wasn't praying only. He was talking to his Allah. He was talking. You want to talk to your bank manager? Talk to Allah. Oh my Allah, I'm walking.
walking in the street. Oh my Allah, I'm tempted with this woman. My Allah, nobody knows what I'm doing but you. My Allah, I've dropped my gaze. You come, my rebellious son. My Allah, I've dropped my gaze. You bring sanity to my young teenage daughter. Oh my Allah, I've dropped my gaze. You bring piety to my spouse. Oh Allah, I've dropped my gaze. Oh my Allah, you bring wholesome provisions to my house. Oh my Allah, you give me pure income. Oh Allah, you rescue me from my financial crisis, whatever the nature is. Anyway, he dies before he enters Makkah. Ibn Jawzi says, now see, see what it did for him because of his piety when the moment came because of the bond that was developed. One prayer, he advanced and he said, oh Allah, I don't want that man in Makkah and I'm not going to settle for less. Oh, look at those words. He passes away. Abdul Rahman Mahdi Rahmatullah says, I seen him in a dream. I asked him, how was things? How did you fare before Allah? He said, I was loaded into my grave. And suddenly I appeared before Allah. And then Allah was very kind. My reckoning was simple. I, didn't, I wasn't subjected to intense interrogation. It was basic, what you carry in those that, what you did, etc. Allah overlooked and pardoned. And I was then ushered into paradise. فَبَيْنَمَا أَدُورُ بَيْنَ أَشْجَارِهَا وَأَنْهَارِهَا As I was strolling merrily in the gardens of paradise, إِذْ سَمِعْتُ قَائِلِي يَقُولُ Are you this unseen voice calling out, Sufyan? I said, yes, yes, that's me, that's me, that's me. And then the voice engages me. Do you know why you are where you are? I'm like, please tell me, I know it's the mercy of my Lord. But do you know which action of yours impressed us? I said, please tell me, my Allah. تَحْفَذُ أَنَّكَ آثَرْتَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَلَى هَوَاكَ يَوْمَا He was sitting in seclusion one day. There was no human around you. There was no physical eye. In today's time, there was no camera on you. There was nobody watching you. You were tempted with evil. You had the perfect time, the open platform, the equal choice to vent it, to perpetrate it, to cause it, to commit it. But you respected us. You honored us. We respected you. We honored you. Paradise is yours. My young boy, make the calculated choice. My young brother, make the calculated choice. That is why I always say, don't react, respond. Reaction is instinctive. And responding is a thought process. When you react, you're instinctive in what you're doing. And when you're instinctive, it could be diluted with emotions. It could be flavored with so many things. But when you respond, more than often you mature, you balance, you calm, you focus, you're objective. That is why Sufyan Thawri Rahmatullah used to say, لا خير في لذة من بعدها النار Oh my Allah, what must I do with a woman or a drug, a sin or a vice, the immediate consequences of which is the blazing fire of hell? And Hussein ibn Mutayr Rahmatullah alayhi said, ولا خير في لذة لا تقرب الأمر الحرام فإنما حلاوته تفنى ويبقى مريرها What did he say? He said, do not, do not approach a sin because فإنما حلاوتها تفنى إنما حلاوتها تفنى ويبقى مريرها Its sweetness is the first thing to disappear and its bitterness and regrets never leaves you. Its sweetness is the first thing to disappear and its bitterness never leaves you. The point that I'm saying is sin, its consequences, its repercussion, its evil is permanent. لا تقرب الأمر الحرام فإنما حلاوته تفنى How long is that sweetness? How long is that thrill? And by Allah, after the sin, the depression is greater than before.